All right, we're going to continue uh, finding limits analytically. Now we're going to change our technique. In the first video, we were using the dividing out technique. Now we're going to use the rationalizing technique. You might remember that word rationalizing from back in your earlier courses where you tried to get the square root of the denominator, so you rationalize the denominator. It's similar to that. Sometimes we don't want to get the square root out of the denominator, we want to get it out of the numerator. All right, so we're finding limits analytically. The first thing we're going to do is plug in zero. And as you can see, when you do evaluate this at zero, you get indeterminate. So that tells us that since we didn't get a number answer or a DNE, we have to do more work. Uh, it doesn't appear that we can factor the numerator. So what, what we might want to do here is use the technique of rationalizing. Okay, so locate the square root wherever it's at, numerator or denominator. And notice that I'm putting a multiplication here at the end of this limit statement. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the conjugate okay, of this square root, of this numerator. So conjugate might be something um, you need to be reminded about. The conjugate means that you're going to keep the first and the last terms, so in this case, this root and this one, but you're going to change the sign. You're going to change the operation to its opposite. Okay, so we're going to build a form of one here. So we built the conjugate, but now we have to fill the rest of the fraction with the conjugate because what this is is a form of one. And we can multiply this expression by a, a form of one and not um, change anything, not change the value. Okay, so this is a little bit different than the dividing out technique. We actually end up multiplying. Okay, so I just attach it to the end here. Okay, now notice that I haven't substituted the zero in, other than at the very beginning when I determined that it was indeterminate. So I keep the limit. And here I have some algebraic work to perform. So think of this as a multiplication. I'm going to put parentheses around it. Okay, now in the numerator, you're going to multiply these conjugates, and what happens is when you multiply them, when you FOIL them, F-O-I-L, the outside and the inside terms are going to cancel, so all you have to do is multiply the first terms and the last terms. So this square root times itself is just going to release the radicand. Radicand, just a fancy word that means what's under the radical. So I'm going to get x plus 1, and then I'm going to get minus 1. All right, we'll come back and clean that up, but you can see that it's going to reduce to x. And that's actually in the original problem, the problem. X is the problem because I'm, I end up dividing by 0. All right, so when I clean the numerator up here to x, I'm going to be able to cancel it with this x down here. So because I am going to be able to cancel it with this x, don't multiply this x inside these two terms. Just leave it in factored form. Just leave it the way you see it. So I multiplied the two numerators together, but not the denominators, because I see what's going to happen. All right, cleaning the numerator up, I'm just going to get x. I'm going to bring over the denominator. Okay, notice that your x's are going to cancel. Okay, and remember you need a placeholder up here in the numerator, so we're going to put a 1 here. Okay, the numerator doesn't disappear. Okay, now that the x is out of the picture, out of the problem, we're going to be able to plug 0 in. So I'm going to drop the limit. I'm going to have 1 over. Okay, plug 0 in. The square root of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So the answer to this limit question is a half. You could verify it by putting this into y equals, graphing it, and then tracing near values of 0, and you're going to see that your y's are close to 0.5. So this is called the rationalizing technique. And how you know to do that is nothing looks obvious to factor, but you do see that square root. Okay, so we just need to practice a few.
you might be looking at this problem going, well, we just did that previous, but with the dividing out technique, we sure did. Now you have a choice on this problem. I prefer to just factor the denominator into the sum and difference of like terms. But if you forget that and you see the square root, you might automatically think, well, let me use the rationalizing technique. It works too. Remember what the answer was previously. I think it was 1 sixth. So we should get the same answer using a different strategy. All right, well, first of all, let's just plug in 9 and verify that we do get indeterminate. Yeah, we do. We don't want to use the dividing out technique. We find the square root. It happens to be in the numerator. It could have been in the denominator, but we're going to work with the numerator. The conjugate is going to be the square root of x plus 3, and we complete the fraction, the form of 1, by just putting that same expression down here. All right, I'm not going to lose the limit yet. So look down, make sure you're writing down the limit. Let's come back here and multiply the numerators together. And you might see that that's x minus 9. Okay, well notice that we have a factor of x minus 9 in the denominator, which is going to be convenient to cancel with the numerator. So don't do more work than you need to, meaning don't foil these together. Don't multiply them together. Box them or however you learned to multiply two binomials together. Okay, notice that we're going to be able to cancel the x minus 9 with the whole x minus 9 down here. Placeholder of 1. Now that x minus 9 is out of the picture, I won't be dividing by 0. Let's try and plug in 9 again. So you're going to get 1 over, plug 9 in, square root of 9 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. So our answer is the same that we got from the other strategy of dividing out. So you have a choice on these problems right here. Okay, let's look at another one. You can see already if I replace negative 3 for x, I'll be dividing by 0. So let's see what takes place in the numerator. Plug in negative 3, add 7. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0, so we're going to get indeterminate. Okay, we can't have that as an answer because we need a number or D and E. So I see a, I identify a square root. I'm thinking conjugate. change the operation, keep the first and last term, complete the form of 1 for the fraction, and do the necessary algebra. The limit's not gone yet. Bring it over. That's important. Okay, multiplying the two numerators, you're going to get x plus 7, and then minus the 4. Notice when you clean it up, you're going to get x plus 3 in the top, which will conveniently factor with or cancel with the denominator. So don't do more work than you need to. Leave the denominator in the factored version. Cleaning up the numerator, I'm going to have x plus 3. I will be canceling it down here. Some of my marks are disappearing, I don't know. Okay. have to leave a 1 up here when they divide out. Now we can plug in negative 3. We're still going to have that 1 in the numerator. We're going to drop the limit because we're plugging in a value. Negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 plus this other 2 is 4. So our answer to this limit problem is 1 fourth. All right, I want to do one more example. It doesn't require the dividing out technique or the rationalizing technique, but it's a neat little problem. Okay, we're going to have a complex fraction. Complex fraction means you have fractions inside of fractions. 
So we have fractions in the numerator of a fraction, and then x down here. All right, just plug in 0. Wherever you see x, you're going to get 1 fourth minus a fourth, which is 0 over 0. So our problem is this x right here. All right, so because we get indeterminate, you know, you automatically think factoring. I don't see anything that's going to work here. Think conjugates. That's usually something we do for square root, so that doesn't really apply. Okay, this is a more involved algebra 2 kind of situation. Okay, here's what we do when we have complex fractions. We look at the different denominators of all terms. Okay, here's a term, 4 minus x. Here's a term, 4. Those are the denominators. I can make x a fraction by putting it over 1 in the denominator. So when we look at the different denominators of these individual fractions, well, we're going to build we're actually going to build a common denominator. Okay, so that's going to require that I multiply all of these denominators together. When I multiply all these denominators together, I'm going to do so and build a fraction. So 4 minus x times 4. So I'm going to put it in this order. 4 times quantity, 4 minus x. So when I say, that's a 4. When I say quantity, I want you to think of the symbol parentheses. Well, that's what I'm going to multiply by, but I need to build a complete fraction that, that cancels to 1. So if you just look at what I'm multiplying by, this is just a form of 1, just like I did up here, but with square roots. Okay? All right, so like I said, this one's a little more involved, but it's, it's, it's good algebra here. Okay, I'm going to bring the limit over. Okay, and the reason we're going to do this is because we want to clear these individual fractions. We don't want a complex fraction. So what we do is we take and multiply, which means we distribute. So think about multiplying 1 over 4 minus x times 4 times 4 minus x over 1. Well, the 4 minus x down here is going to cancel with 4 minus x, leaving a factor of 4. So this product right here, when you cancel 4 minus x, leaves you with a 4 on top and a 1 on the bottom. I'm just going to write it as 4 minus. Now it's time to multiply by the 1 fourth. Well notice now the 4's will cancel leaving the parentheses 4 minus x. So I just cleared that complex fractions numerator of fractions. And kind of pause and look at this for a minute. When you distribute the minus, the 4's will cancel and you'll have a positive x on top which is going to actually cancel with this x down here. Okay, it was really kind of unnecessary to build a fraction here because now it's time to multiply these two together where both of these denominators are 1. Okay, because I know when I'm going to clean this up, I'm going to get x and it'll cancel with this x, I'm not going to um, multiply everything through. I'm just going to leave everything in factored form. Maybe just use parentheses to keep it all looking decent. So that's a 4. Okay, let's do a little cleanup. Notice the limit's not gone because I'm cleaning up. So in the numerator, when I distribute here, the 4's will cancel and I'm left with an x. Now look at what you can do. You can cancel these x's, leave the 1 up here. We should be able to now reevaluate the limit at 0 because we've uh, removed the x situation here. So we're going to get 1 over drop the limit, plug 0 in here for this x, and I'm going to get 4 times 4, or 16. All right, if you're confused on this last example, you probably wouldn't be alone. It's not, one of, it's not um, a technique that's often used, but I think if you take this course, this is something that you should see because you don't know when this skill is going to come up later, or you need to clear fractions by building a um, a common denominator and making it a, a, a fraction of one. Okay. All right. So those uh, mostly in this video we did the dividing out technique and the rationalizing technique for finding limits analytically. Those limits that give us a little more difficulty that don't just work out to be z uh, a number or DNE.